Hello friends and welcome to the channel. In this century we'll be taking a look at Long John Silver as played by Charlton Heston from the 1990 made for TV movie Treasure Island based on the classic novel by Robert Louis Stevenson. A character that has become a pillar of contemporary pirate literature, Long John remains one of the most popular fictional pirates with the stereotypical one-legged appearance and a talking parrot perched on his shoulder. Ironically, in the context of the story, Long John appears to be anything but a pirate despite his appearance. When we first encounter him in the Spyglass Inn, he comes off as a noble and upright sailor, a civilized man with a magnetic charisma, one who stands in sharp contrast with his vulgar and barbaric peers. This amicable appearance is so effective that Captain Smollett is taken in by him and puts in a good word for him with the squire. But Long John's decency is merely one side of his character, for on the other hand, he is a cunning and cold-blooded killer driven by the sinister vice of greed. Perhaps Long John was a precursor to Stevenson's concept of the duality of man explored in Jekyll and Hyde, with Treasure Island being written a few years prior. At the midpoint of the story, Long John's character takes a villainous turn, Yet we as the audience cannot help but root for him and hope for his redemption. This villainous turn begins with the tool of deception. Long John's charisma may very well be a result of his actual personality and not from his malicious intent. But while he pretends to be merely the ship's cook aboard the Hispaniola, he is secretly the ringleader of a gang of pirates waiting to conduct a mutiny. The story behind his amputated leg is also false, as the word around is that he lost his leg from serving in the Royal Navy, but later on he reveals of his own accord that it came from a battle aboard his time as a quartermaster on Captain Flint's ship, the Walrus. While on the subject of Long John's handicap, it bears noting that his disability indirectly highlights his strength. Despite being dependent on a crutch, Long John is agile enough to keep up with his other two-legged compatriots as they traverse along rocky and wet terrain. Holding his own in close quarter combat is also not above him. One can only imagine the Sigma male he would be if he had both his legs for use. Perhaps the highest compliment that Long John receives in the film is the recognition by the men that even his former Captain Flint was afraid of him. Beyond just physical strength, Long John is also a man of mental fortitude. He remains calm and unafraid when Ben Gunn pretends to haunt the island as Captain Flint's ghost, an act which causes the rest of his men to tremble. In spite of his cruel deeds, Long John appears to be somewhat religious from his use of the word Amen and from his bereavement of one of his men for tearing a page from the Bible to use as a black spot. Perhaps this in part contributes to his fear of hanging, in addition to the grisly sight it produces. Long John's mind is a cunning one, and his plan might have worked out if not for Jim's interference. His evil is considerable, given that he is willing to mutiny and murder the ship's crew in the name of profit, and for the fact that dead men tell no tales. But while he may appear brutal, Long John also displays a more diplomatic side when he tries to talk the reluctant Tom into joining their mutiny. He could have just ended him, as was the case with Mr. Arrow, the ship's original first mate, but Long John decides to give him a chance. It's only when they overhear Alan being killed that Long John knew the game was up, and he had to put an end to Tom as well. In that instant, we get another example of his duality as he instantly switches to attacking him instead, starting with the risky move of throwing his crutch as a projectile. We see this from Jim's perspective, which makes for a sharing in the horrific discovery over his brutality. Now, of course, Long John's most redeeming quality is his father figure relationship to Jim Hawkins, born out of the notion that Jim reminds him of his younger and more innocent self. Of all the characters in the film, Jim is the only one that he appears to have some semblance of loyalty to. Other than that, Long John proves to be rather disloyal, switching his allegiance to whichever side appears to be winning. 
His fondness for Jim is rather remarkable. Given the amount of trouble Jim caused with the stealing of the ship Hispaniola and hiding it, when Jim reveals that he was the one who ratted him out to the captain for his planned mutiny, Long John doesn't take revenge against Jim when he's previously killed for less, as we've seen with the murder of Tom. Furthermore, he protects Jim by forbidding his vengeful crew from harming him, and later he arms Jim with a pistol when his crew fly into a rage over the missing treasure. It would appear that Long John is keeping Jim as a hostage, and of his own admission, is using Jim as a favorable witness should he come to stand trial for his crimes of piracy. But this is likely just an excuse he puts forth to Jim to appease him for the moment, with the real reason being the previously mentioned father-son relationship. This is seen when after getting back on the ship, he tells Jim that while he appreciates his testimony, there's only so much that a boy's word can hold up against the craftiness of the lawyers. Perhaps Long John and Jim are more similar than they appear. Both of them are bold and resourceful with an apparent sense of tenacity. Despite having Squire Trelawney and Dr. Livesley as role models, Jim gravitates towards Long John the most, despite disagreeing with his moral code. If not for this moral code, Jim can easily said to have the makings of a pirate himself. The crux of this is seen before Long John's departure, when he tells Jim what a pair the two of them could have made. At the end, Long John's fate is bittersweet, a split between success and failure, just like his character arc, teetering between villain and anti-hero. While he never got enough treasure to retire as a gentleman, as originally intended, he escapes from the repercussions of his actions with a compensatory amount of gold, free to live out the rest of his days in an uncertain fate. So what do you think of Long John Silver from Treasure Island, folks? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, check out this one here on Cutler Beckett. Thanks for watching and take care.